Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go in depth on the story of why the Dodge Hellcats were created, and also some engineering and decisions as to why the engine turned out how it did, and why some of the parts were used. I've had this video idea for a while now, so I wanted to talk more about the Hellcats, and uncover some information that not everyone might have known about. So here's the video outline on screen. The first part focuses on the idea behind the Hellcat, why Dodge built it, and creating the name and logo, and the second goes into the engineering and development of the engine. For transparency, some of this information is found in my Hellcat History Flaws Cancelled video, but there's lots of new stuff mixed in as well, and the entire part talking about the engine is also brand new content too. So let's get into it. One of the people most responsible for the Hellcat existing would be Chris Cowland. Callan was born in Cambridgeshire, England, and he would work his way up to be the director of advanced and SRT powertrain for Fiat Chrysler. The Hellcat idea first came alive in 2011 when Cowland approached FCA's corporate product forum, which included the top 20 executives, including the CEO. Cowland talked about this, saying, quote, You can bring any idea to the product forum. If you can make a business plan, you can plead your case. End quote. The original target was 600 horsepower to make the most powerful muscle car, which would have surpassed Ford's Shelby GT500 Mustang. But word then got out that Ford was also developing a Mustang engine with over 600 horsepower as well. The FCA executives did not want to develop all of this just to come in second place, so Callan's team had to come up with a new goal of 675 horsepower. The executives were on board, but they didn't give the team any extra time for development, and the car had to have the same fuel economy that they promised at 600 horsepower. Callan talked about this, saying that, quote, The timing was a real concern. Internally, the team's target had always been 700 horsepower. We like to over-deliver, but we expected more time. End quote. This time, everything was done in full secrecy. Some parts of the product development team did not even know the powertrain team was working on this engine. People working on one part didn't know what others working on a different part were doing. The horsepower tests were verified by the Society of Automotive Engineers, but the numbers were never released within the company. Callan said it best, quote, we built it because we could. We wanted to make a statement and move the brand forward, end quote. Callan was also proud that the Hellcat engines can run at max power for long periods of time. Some automakers protect their engines with software that reduces output after 10 to 30 seconds at maximum power, but Callan said, quote, Our requirement was 20 minutes of track time at full rated output. You can make drag strip run after drag strip run with no deterioration in performance, end quote. At the time, the current Dodge CEO, Tim Kaniskis, was the head of FCA's passenger car brands in North America. He also talked about the Hellcat representing who Dodge was and overcoming every obstacle to make the best version of the Charger and Challenger that they could. Of course, this new creation would need a name. Dodge named it after the Grumman F6F Hellcat, which was a World War II American carrier-based fighter aircraft that was used in the Pacific War from 1942 to 1945. 12,275 of those were built, and they are said to have destroyed over 5,200 enemy aircraft in service. The F6F Hellcat had a 2,000 horsepower, 46-liter, 18-cylinder engine that was called the Pratt & Whitney R2800 Double Wasp, and it even featured a supercharger as well. The definition of a Hellcat is a bad-tempered, spiteful woman, so that also fits the bill here. One SRT executive once said, quote, It just fits the car. It fits the engine and the sound of it. This one just had so much strength behind it. End quote. The other name that was being seriously considered was the Alley Cat. As for the logo, originally Dodge didn't plan for one. You'll notice that the first media photos of the car at press events and photo shoots just had supercharged fender badges only. Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskis said that the logo itself was a very last minute change that was driven by feedback on social media. You can see the many iterations that were considered, but ultimately, now we are familiar with the fierce, aggressive cat logo baring its teeth and pulling its ears back. Now we get to talk about the engine development and the decisions behind this glorious 6.2 liter supercharged motor. As mentioned, the target for the Hellcat engine was around 700 horsepower, so development was focused on that, as well as making it last a long time as a production engine should. The foundation of the Hellcat is the BGE, or big gas engine blocks, that were originally found in the Ram heavy duty pickups. These BGE blocks were thicker than the ones found in the 392 Hemi engine powered cars and SUVs, but they did end up being used for the cars and SUVs as well around 2017 to 2018. SRT wanted to try to develop an aluminum cylinder block, but it made sense to use the existing iron block due to the costs and the fact that it was proven to be durable. Greg Black, who was the chief engineer on the Hellcat Hemi, talked about this, saying, quote, 
We already had a 6.4 liter block with a high duty cycle developed for trucks. We knew the strength of that block had been upgraded for that program. It made sense to leverage hardware already available, end quote. Another issue with aluminum was the high cylinder pressures as computer modeling projected 1600 PSI of cylinder pressure here. Black says that the extra stiffness of the iron helped to prevent distortion under the high cylinder pressures. The block was painted hemi-orange for the Hellcats, unlike in the Ram trucks at the time. As for the huge upgrades in power over a 6.4, 707 horsepower, and 650 pound-feet of torque in the 2015 Hellcats, the SRT team had to make some changes to strengthen the engine. They had to build a new dyno for testing because none of the existing lab facilities were capable of handling that much power. One key difference was a 3.58 inch forged steel crank as opposed to the 3.72 inch in the 6.4 liter Hemi. This crank has hardened bearing surfaces as well, unlike any other Chrysler product. Black talked about how less cross-sectional area made a big difference in the strength and stiffness of the crank, so that's why a switch was made from the 3.72 inch. The Hellcat uses powder forged connecting rods like other Chrysler engines, but the metallic compound was upgraded. Forged aluminum pistons were unique to the Hellcat, which has a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio, compared to 10.9 to 1 in the 392. The second and oil rings are direct carryover from the 6.4 liter Hemi engine, but the first compression ring features a PVD coating. Piston skirts are graphite coated, and the piston pan is DLC coated. The cylinder head port shapes and sizes carry over from the 6.4 liter Hemi, but of course there were changes in order to accommodate for the supercharger and the other mounting points. The Hellcat heads are cast with upgraded 356 aluminum over 319. The supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi engine uses the same free-flowing exhaust manifolds that are found on the 6.4 liter Hemi, and Black basically said that those were good enough to use on this engine as well. As for the supercharger, SRT engineers tested with several suppliers before they settled on working with IHI Turbo America. It was a wise choice, as they also build superchargers for Mercedes AMG engines and Mercury Marine. The air catcher inlet port helps to draw air to a massive 8 liter airbox, which then goes through a 92 mm throttle body, which was the largest Chrysler had ever put on a vehicle. Black talked about some of the supercharger developments, saying, quote, we were able to get more boost with less belt energy and less temperature increase. That means there's a smaller load on the intercooler system. We designed the airflow path in the plenum to separate and direct the flow to two banks. On top are large radii pulling the flow forward, end quote. A huge part of making over 700 horsepower is the 11.6 pounds of boost that's generated by the Hellcats. As for that boost, it is controlled with an electronically operated bypass valve instead of vacuum operated. This bypass valve had to have the same precision control as a throttle body, so the SRT engineers adapted the throttle body from a Tiger Shark engine to serve as that bypass valve. Black talked about the bypass being there, so they weren't creating boost when it wasn't wanted. As for the supercharger whine, it sounds glorious at the drag strip or ripping down the street, but the engineers adapted a decoupler on the supercharger drive pulley to calm it down during idle when the crank is subject to noticeable acceleration and deceleration. Engineers also had some other tricks up their sleeve between the throttle body and the bypass positions that minimized the supercharger whine when it wasn't desired. Due to the other additions in the engine, the development team didn't have to push the cam events quite hard, as evidenced by the fact that the Hellcat valve lifts were less than the 6.4 liter Hemi, 14.25 millimeters for the intake and 14 millimeters for the exhaust on the Hellcat, compared to 14.5 millimeters for the intake and 13.6 millimeters for the exhaust on the 392. The camshaft can be phased to move the torque curve slightly or improve emissions, but the change in advance or retard is not independent for the intake and exhaust valves. There was talk about using a cam and cam to provide independent control of those valves, similar to tech found in the Viper V10 engine, but Black said that, quote, we were able to meet the goals set out for the program without going to that technology, end quote. Another improvement was found in the exhaust valves, as they were made of upgraded material to handle hotter temperatures but much of the rest of the valve train was a direct carryover from the 6.4 liter. Finally, to talk about a few other upgrades that the engineers decided were needed, SRT used larger fuel injectors that flow 41.13 pounds an hour at 58 PSI, rather than those in the 6.4 liter that flow 26.89 pounds an hour, also at 58 PSI. SRT also developed a variable fuel pressure system with a pulse width modulated in-tank fuel pump. The Hellcat fuel pump flows 500 pounds an hour way more than 317 pounds an hour in the 392 Hemi. The engineers wanted better lubrication as well, so they used a high-flow oil pump and individual piston squirters 
and an engine oil cooler for the Hellcat specific 0W40 Pennzoil synthetic oil. The Hellcat engines were built at the Saltillo, Mexico plant, and each engine got a 42 minute dyno shakedown before being shipped off to the Brampton assembly plant to be put in the cars. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out the origins of the Hellcat and how the car and this engine came to be. If you want to see another video like this, I can do something similar for the Dodge Demon. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.